I think I would be right in line to be talking about how African American history in medicine has really played such a significant point in my life. More importantly, just in each other's historical relevance. I don't think you can talk about one without talking about the other, because that's how entwined medicine and African American history is. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the lies. We're going to talk about exploitation. We're going to talk about lack of trust. More importantly, we're going to talk about how even in three, we can look back and see exactly how and why we've gotten to the point we're at right now, where trust is at an all-time low, chronic diseases predominantly affect African Americans at a much more significant rate than everyone else. It's almost like a straight line shot. And especially during Black History Month, where a lot of the focus is on the accomplishments, a lot of the focus is on the importance and relevance of our historical figures. There's such a dark side in medicine. And I understand that I, being on this side, represent a part of an industry that has a significant black eye in African community. That I just feel like I have to do what we're going to do. So we're going to talk about how that intersection between African American history and medicine has played a role into what we see is modern medicine today and what we see as far as our health disparities is today as well. Stick with me. I think if we're gonna if we're gonna start, let's start with the big one. Let's talk about Tuskegee. Let's talk about an experiment that lasted for 40 years. An experiment that had 400, about 400 African-American men go into a study, say, hey, you know what? We want to look at the effects of untreated syphilis. And again, it started in 1932. And by the mid-1940s, penicillin was around. And we know that penicillin is the standard treatment. It was well known that penicillin was the standard treatment of care for syphilis. But still, this study continued to move on. The study saw people die from syphilis. The study saw people die from the complications of syphilis. The study saw people get severely harmed from the late stage effects of syphilis, but still. It wasn't until a newspaper, investigative reporter of sort, if you got in modern times, leaked out that said, hey, look what's going on over there. And they were forced to close that study down. Who knows what it would have been like if they didn't do that? I don't even want to imagine. So when you have that study being such a significant study that it has been deemed one of the most infamous biomedical research studies of all time, then you can't fast forward into 2023 asking, hey, why doesn't this community trust us doctors? Why doesn't this community trust our medications? Why doesn't this community trust our vaccination? It just, it's the proof is in the pudding. It's in the history. And it's been such a significant black eye that still to this day, it is easily the most referenced when we talk about mistrust. It is easily the most referenced when we talk about lies and this the most referenced when we talk about our apprehension, especially in the African-American community, for new things, for new treatment, the COVID vaccine. And I wish that was it. I wish I could say the Tuskegee was the height and we learned our lesson. And by we, I say medicine. 
but we did not. We have Henrietta Lacks, an amazing woman who went to the doctor and said, hey, you know what? I'm not feeling good. I feel like this lump is in my stomach. And lo and behold, was eventually diagnosed with cervical cancer. Now, that wouldn't be the end all because she did receive the appropriate treatment that she would have received. So thank God for that. But what transpired later has transformed medical research to this day, which is again, why I talk about how really can't talk about medical history, not talk about African medicine, especially during Black History Month. So those cells, which they shortened to called HeLa cells for Henrietta Lacks, HeLa cells, were known as immune cells, were known as the, the, the ability to reproduce continuously. Those cells that they derived from Henrietta without her knowledge, yes, Again, this is again, this is the this is the industry I'm in. Without their knowledge, a doctor took her cells, did tons of Amer tons and tons of research, spread her cells across the world that allowed for research such as genetic mapping, cancer research, all these things that have had significant ramifications to how we take care of patients today. And they never even told the family. They never told her. In fact, the only reason why, again, what's sad sometimes about our healthcare system, our history behind it, there's a black guy there. The only reason why the family was aware was because there were certain samples that got damaged, contaminated, and they needed new ones. So they started calling family members saying, hey, can you donate your blood? And the family's like, donate our blood? Why? Why? What's so special about our blood? And they eventually had to tell them, hey, this is what we've been doing. And like in Tuskegee, apologies were made. Now, experiments didn't stop because guess what? Her cells were such a significant part of medicine and medical research that they just took those. They said, I'm, I understand, but. The research must go on. And I don't know about compensation. You know, I didn't delve that deep, but I'm pretty sure a lot of money was made off her back, off her cells in particular, to be more specific. But here we are again, another crossroad, another black eye, another example of why the benefit of our advancement came on the backs of African-Americans. So it had gotten to the point where exploitation was the norm. Think about that. They didn't think, you know what, we should maybe go through this in ethical ways. Maybe we should go through this in a way that's more you know, beneficial and consensual. No, like that was still the norm for our care for African-Americans in the country. And it wasn't until, again, we, I almost think about it like Monday morning quarterback, they look back and they say, oh, you know what? Probably shouldn't did that. Like that's, that's not something we should have did. All the way back to dating back to slavery, using enslaved people as cadavers. Like it, it unfortunately goes deep, y'all. And we couldn't and shouldn't Talk about how great medicine has gotten without talking about how bad medicine used to be, especially to a particular community at hand. And there's plenty of studies, right? And I, I kind of mentioned just this aspect of distrust. I've obviously given plenty of examples over these past few years of how just me speaking about the COVID vaccine, I was deemed almost like a traitor. Like, how can you turn against us? from the African American. How can you try to sell us and push? This is what was deemed and termed a lot. How can you push this on our community? You know what they have done to us. 
medicine and racism very intertwined, unfortunately, in our history. So when we fast forward and we talk about, and we'll talk about later as far as just some of the structural issues embedded in our healthcare and in our chronic diseases, I'm hoping that this historical kind of foundation is enough for you to say, okay, now I kind of get why, I kind of get it. JAMA talked about JAMA, JAMA Internal Medicine, Journal of American Internal Medicine said that only 3% of African Americans trust the medical system to do what's always best for them. 50% of African Americans believe that the US medical system is racist. I am a part of the US medical system. It's very difficult for me to argue against. And I'm a part of the system. Take care of the African American community, amongst many other communities, but I'm a part of that system. So when you have the black guys, the multiple black guys, when you have the historical evidence to show that for our community, the African American community, we were never really looked at as people. We were never looked at as human. We were subhuman to everyone, especially those who were supposed to take care of us. So if it got to that point, so those who were supposed to take care of us looked at it as subhuman, of course, Tuskegee occurs. Of course, Henrietta Lacks occurs. occurs. Of course, the slave owners and the cadavers, of course that occurs. Like, why, why wouldn't it? They don't look at us as human. So imagine, imagine our surprise in our community <laughs> when we fast forward and, and, and let's talk about some of the health disparities, right? Because that's very common, very common thing that gets talked about a lot. But what's interesting that it always gets talked about on the onus of said community. Oh, that community has a higher incidence, hypertension, high blood pressure. That community has a higher incidence of high cholesterol. That community has a higher incidence of diabetes. But why? Because that's always the question. I had a favorite attending of mine, Dr. Kanner, who always said that as a physician, the most important question you could ask is why? Not anything from a rogue memory and that you've studied on an exam and it pops up. No, just asking why. And I used to do that a lot in school. Because it just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense that every time we read about a disease, African Americans were affected more. Talk about a cancer, African Americans affected more. We talk about the lack of treatment options, African Americans affected more. Like it just didn't make any sense until I got educated on the historical nature of medicine. And then I said, oh, yep, that's it. That's the straight line that I was missing. That's the B line that said, oh, okay. Yeah, I can see why we would have. Yeah, I could see why high blood pressure is difficult. Yeah, I can see why we don't participate in any of the research. Yeah, I can see that now. And I'm hoping as we listen and understand, depending on where you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on the podcast, hope we can understand like, hey, yeah, I kind of get their point. I kind of understand how they got to where they got to. Because it, it's just evidence after evidence that says, hey, and fool me once, like shame on me. Fool me once, shame on me. All right, you got me on that one. But fool me twice, like I got to take that on the chin. Right? I can't let you fool me twice. And that's what's happening. Like when I say I don't trust that person over there, when I don't trust that system over there, it's because they've already fooled me once and I do not want to get fooled again. I can't. I, I risk my life being fooled again, and they don't want to do that. So it's tough. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> I know, I know. CDC says that African Americans are disproportionately affected by hypertension, nearly 50% more likely to die from stroke compared to white Americans. African Americans are 1.7 times more likely to have diabetes than non-Hispanic white Americans. Again, the, the, it, it can't just be a coincidence that if you don't trust the system, you're not going to trust their um, directions, you're not going to trust their ideals, you're not going to trust their dietary recommendations. Oh, it just makes sense, y'all. And if that wasn't the case, you had a system that didn't put roadblocks 
of access then put roadblocks of knowledge so you couldn't even get to see the people you need to see you couldn't get this the right specialist you couldn't get to see the right primary care doctor if you had an opportunity to get the right primary care doctor so guess what happens right african americans found to have less likely to have a usual source of care receive preventative services and have less less access the specialty care according to study published in health affairs again these are things that just continue to snowball and yes it's the black history month but if we're going to talk about black history month and you're going to be talking on a medicine show like this one you better talk about all the atrocities you better talk about how this history of medicine does not get here without african history it just doesn't be honest, right? <laughs> that, that's just not the case here. And that, that doesn't even include lack of insurance, lower income families, lack of transportation, racial bias and medical treatment, right? Do you know that recently they did a study on pain? And you had medical students who were going to be physicians assuming that because people were african-american they experienced less pain and if a person assumes you experience less pain guess what they give you less pain medication when i talk a lot about my sickle cell patients we've had a couple episodes on sickle cell disease i talk about how much stigma goes into that diagnosis imagine a diagnosis giving you stigma before you walk in the door a diagnosis making people think you're a pain seeker and because they think you're a pain seeker they assume you don't need that much pain medication so they let you wallow in pain this is what happens so again i'm in pain you tell me i'm not in pain my body is telling me i'm in pain you refuse to treat me how do you expect me to trust you just how this these are just questions these are just Simple question that when we talk about medicine, when we talk about African Americans, we talk about how this has been a relationship that's been rocky from the beginning. And I'm not saying that it's completely absolvent, that there's no way you could fix it, but I'm at least having acknowledging that it's rocky and it started rocky. In fact, rocky is probably very loose of a term. So when we get to this point here, we have to understand, okay, I understand how we got to this point. Because you can't improve, you can't improve the health disparities if you don't understand why health disparities are there. You can't improve the lack of trust in the system if you don't understand why the lack of trust in the system is there. You can't do it. It doesn't make any sense. It's impossible. So I, again, I, I, I love... I love that the historical information is there. I hate that it happened. But as a physician, again, one who's on this side, even though I'm an African-American physician, I understand that I have to not only represent the community that I want to trust, but I have to represent this as well. And especially when we talk about trying to change the system from within, I have to be that. I have to do that. Because if I don't do that, guess what happens? You don't trust us. If I don't do that, guess what happens? You miss out on life-saving treatments because you don't even know. Or you won't even come to see us because you, you, uh, I don't know about that system. You know I don't know what they're talking about. I feel fine. I feel great. I'm not going to go there. And you come see me and it's too late. You come see me after the heart attack. You come see me after the stroke. You come see me after the cancer is on a late stage and my treatment options are less. Like, that's what happens when you don't trust. That's what happens when my field, right, of care does you wrong. <laughs> like, again, yeah, I, I wish, right? <laughs> I, I, I wish there was more, I wish there was more to say. So when we talk about these efforts to address, when we talk about the efforts to eliminate health disparities, we have to start here, right? We have to start about what does it mean? I kind of mentioned early in my introduction that this year we had less black men go into medical school and what's worse we had less men even apply to try to get there so we have to increase our efforts to increase 
that those on this side, on the inside, look like and feel like and understand like the community we're trying to trust. I mean, we're trying to trust who we're trying to gain. Like, it has to occur, right? You have to improve diversity. You have to improve the level of cultural competency because guess what? Even if tomorrow, tomorrow, every African American, but you know what? I want to go see a doctor. The likelihood that they're going to see someone who looks like them is so low. So my colleagues, right? My non-African American colleagues have to understand that there's cultural competency and how extremely important it is to understand that person comes to you and say, I have the sugar, you know, they mean diabetes. When that person comes to you and say, oh my God, do I have the sugar? It means they're asking you, Oh my God, are you telling me I can't eat rice anymore? There's certain things you just have to understand, especially when you're outside of the community. So we have to improve our diversity. We have to improve the cultural competency, right? We, cause that's the only way you build this thing called doctor patient relationship. That's the only way you break down, right? The barrier trust that's been put in front of us because of decades, centuries of hurt of mistrust and of lies, right? Like that's like how that occurs, right? And obviously, you know, things such as the Affordable Care Act and things like that kind of help, because you know, trying to improve access, because again, if you can't see the doctor, if you don't have insurance, see the doctor. It just, it just is what it is, right? So having, having legislation say, hey, you know what? I want to get those people taken care of, make sure you take care of those people. Those are the steps. We still got some steps to go. I can assure you, because I already know someone's gonna hop in my uh, message. Oh, the Affordable Care Act is expensive, and and usually if you're saying something like that, I know you're in one of the the unfortunate one of those states. You know what states I'm talking about that refuse to expand Medicaid, and because they refuse to expand Medicaid, guess what? Affordable Care Act plans not the best. But go to a state where Medicaid is expanded. And they're pretty okay with their, with their plans, right? We can, we can have a whole discussion on that. They're okay with what's going on uh, from their situation. So before, before I get out of here, right? Before I get out of here again, I just wanted to, again, reiterate. We talk about medicine. When we talk about African-American history, we're here, right? It's together. You can't talk about one without talking about the other. You can't talk about the advancements of one without talking about the other. You can't talk about the inefficiencies, the inadequacies. You can't talk about the disparities of one without talking about the other. They are married together. And I think it's important for us to recognize why we're at the point we're at now if we want to change. Understanding that talking about you know, disparities and trying to blame the community as if the community is the only person to blame that's a losing recipe for you, right? That's, that's a recipe for, I'm not really culturally competent. And I don't really know what's going on. I don't know the history of the field that I'm in. So I'm gonna say, no, nah, they're not compliant. I'm gonna say, no, they're pain seek. I'm gonna say, wow, why won't they listen? Why won't they just take the medic? I'm gonna say, oh, why won't they just join all the studies? I, I make those statements because I don't know the history. That's what happens. When you don't know the history, those are the type of statements you make. But when you understand the history, you say, hey, you know what? I've, I've done this. If, if you caught me on a live or at a clubhouse or TikTok, I've done this. I say, hey, you know, first of all, let me acknowledge we did a bad job in medicine. And I say we. I don't exclude myself because, hey, I'm in medicine now. We did a bad job. I'm here on the other side to make sure we never do that bad job again. And it's a fight. It's not going to change overnight, but it is something that starts with an episode like this. It's something that starts with us acknowledging, recognizing, that says, like, hey, you know what? We messed up. We are going to get better. <laughs> so, again, I'm your truly Dr. Barry. Remember, if you have not had a chance, want some more discussion, go ahead, join the Patreon family. We'd love to see you. We'll have a good little in-depth discussion on this topic. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're dropping amazing content over there. In fact, depending on when you listen to this, it's going to be even more content coming. So 
please stay on the lookout for that. Uh, for my podcast listeners, we love you. Shout out to you guys as well. Make sure you subscribe. If you're an Apple or Spotify user, make sure you leave us that five-star review because we love it and appreciate it. So again, I am yours truly, Dr. Barry Pierre. I'm going to see you guys next week.